you know, you still feel like you want to be home. You know, like, yeah, it's all right being in Hawaii, but what do you do at half past seven when everybody else is getting dressed to go to the club? You know, you're still swimming, you know, and it's, a, it's boring, you know? And uh, you want to be back home. Because it, it, it is a, a buzzing little town, you know, Castle. You know, it buzzes, you know, there's always an excitement there about something that's happening. You talked earlier there about your, your old mates were looking back to the days before Geordie, before your singing. Uh, you mentioned an apprenticeship. What sort of work did you do? Um, I've been a turner, uh, a draftsman, window cleaner. Uh, I used to put in windscreens, you know, the emergency windscreen service on the M1. Uh, vinyl roof fitter. Uh, <laughs> just to do anything like that, you know. I, I, was, a lot. I was looking a moment ago at your, your, <laughs> your sweater there with Newcastle United emblazoned across it. Yeah. Had you ever got an ambition to be a professional footballer? Oh, yeah. I, I just wasn't good enough, you know. I played for the United States of America against Italy. Get away. It, uh, Get away. No, I did. I, I, was, uh, <laughs> I was the only Englishman in the team, actually. And uh, we played uh, Italy at the Fiorentina Stadium. There was about 25,000 there, you know. It was floodlit. My knees had turned to jelly, and it was against the Italian uh, showbiz 11, and they were unbeaten. And they thought we were going to be a walkover. But they didn't think that, you know, we had Chuck Norris, you know, the white Bruce Lee, he was our sender off. Well, you know, you did, didn't go near the man, he was dangerous. And we won 1 0. <laughs> and uh, it was a fantastic uh, night because Dino Zoff came down, he was the Italian goalkeeper, and he presented me with a Man of the Match award. And uh, that was a fantastic night. Fantastic night. How, um, how did you get to play for America? How did that come about? I don't know. I got a telephone call. I, I, I was sitting, scratching my head one Sunday morning, uh, reading the paper, and I, I got a telephone call right out of the blue from uh, Los Angeles or something, and they just said, listen, do you, do you, fancy, do you fancy a game? You bring the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we beat them, and it was great, and that was like the highlight of my life. Mm. You see, Tom, uh, music's me love. And football is my passion. You know what I mean? It's two different things, you know. Uh, well, you may not have made it as a professional footballer, yeah. but you're hoping to make it into the professional soccer world as a director of Newcastle United. What, <laughs> sta what stage is that at? <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. Uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, you put it right on this one. You want to be a director uh, of Newcastle United. You've got a bob or two in the yeah. bank. What's happened? Are yeah. you going to be? I hope so. I hope so, I really do. How, how much money are you prepared to put in at the club? I said 100,000, and I mean 100,000. I'm going to go back and be I don't want anything out of it. I, I want nothing, you know? Uh, and sometimes I think it may be a little unfair for me to be classed as anything to do with Newcastle United if I'm not there. And uh, who am I to say that I could make a big difference to the team? I like to think I could, but... Uh, you know, maybe I'm too inexperienced at it. You know, it's a frightening thought, you know, but I'd love to be able to do something. I know one thing I really would like to help Newcastle United with, and this is another thing that I found refreshing with the directors. They want to make St. James's Park a good rock venue, which I thought was great. Once upon a time, they wouldn't even, they would never have thought of that, because I remember Geordie tried to play there, and they knocked it on the head. Now, you're yeah. opening your own studio to cut discs in the city. Yes. Is yeah. this an ambition of yours to help young people uh, in the music world? Well, I'm really... Uh, yes, it is. I'm, I'm dead excited because it's the realisation of a dream for me. Um, I'm going to try and help people up here, you know? So, you know, without publishing companies and stuff like that. Well, look, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We're going to do one of those magic things on television. You yeah. and me are going to pick up the whiskey. Mm -hmm. The cameraman's going to zoom in on us enjoying ourselves. How can he? He's drunk. And then he... <laughs> He'll pick us up at the studios and we'll see what you're going to offer there. See you at Shieldfield, lads. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well, here we are, Brian, just like that. Yeah, yeah. And this is the mixing desk in the new studio. I expect you know how all these buttons work. Well, I know a few of them. Uh, it's just come in, so it's uh, still pretty new to everyone in this studio. So, you know, we'll, we'll get the hang of it by tomorrow, I think. Well, there have been recording studios for some time in the northeast, but what's so special about this one? Uh, to put it bluntly, it's the best. It's the best you can get, best that money can buy. And um, we've already got uh, about three or four American bands, big American bands, very interested in recording here for tax reasons, obviously, for to record in England. There's some European bands want to come over here, and 
But, you know, at the same time, we don't want to frighten off local talent. You know, we don't want to frighten them off by huge prices, you know. We've obviously got to keep ourselves within the sort of framework that, you know, people up here can afford. Well, you've talked to us about your international career. You're moving away next week. But here you, you've put your money into a recording studio on your native town side. Um, well, it's just, you know, where things have been going the last couple of years, and everybody's been talking about recession and stuff like this. And, and there must be a lot of big money investors who really aren't putting as much money as they should. They may be waiting, hedging their bets a little till the, re the recession's over. Uh, I want to invest my money here because uh, the future of the talent in the Northeast, I mean, it's the biggest hotbed for music in the world as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I just want them to have the best, you know.